Okay, in this section, or in this video, we're starting to take a look at section 4.8, which is Newton's method. Newton's method is a way of approximating numbers. So let's suppose I wanted to approximate the square root of 2. And the key is to view that number as a root of some equation. So if I have some function and I set it equal to 0, the numbers that I can plug in for x that would make this true are called the roots of the equation. And graphically, they would correspond to where the x-intercepts of the graph of f would be. So I want to see if I can come up with an equation um, that would have this as a root. And I'm thinking x squared minus 2 equals 0 would work. Because then, of course, x squared would equal 2. And so x would be plus or minus root 2. So this particular equation has two roots. And I'm looking for this one. So if I were to graph this f of x, x squared minus 2 is just a parabola that's been translated down 2. And I know that right here, that point is at root 2, comma 0. And I want to just try to get a decimal approximation of that. Now, of course, these days we've got technology. So I could just plug into a calculator. I could go to a computer. Uh, I could get a decimal approximation very, very easily. Newton's method, I think, is significant because it's of historical interest. How did people do these things before we had calculators and computers and things like that? But also, you know, somebody's got to program the calculators and the computers. Calculators are not born knowing what the square root of 2 is. First of all, they're not born. Second of all, they don't know anything. Um, so <laughs> they've got to be programmed. So there there got to be some ways of coming up with these approximations. And there are multiple methods that we have of coming up with approximations. Um, a lot of them you'll be learning in 3B if you go on to that class, um, or at least a major one you'll be learning in 3B. But this is just one way that we're going to take a look at right now. So the basic idea is I want to start out by making a guess. So I'm going to say x1 is going to be my initial guess. Now I happen to know that the square root of 2 is between 1 and 2. And I can see that fairly easily because if I square 1, I get 1, which is smaller than 2. And if I square 2, I get 4, which is bigger than 2. Okay. I can also see that because if I were to look at f of 1, notice f of 1 would be 1 minus 2 would be negative 1, which is less than 0. And f of 2, that would be 4 minus 2, that would be 2, which is bigger than 0. Now f, x squared minus 2, is a continuous function. And so now I've got a place where it's negative and a place where it's positive. The intermediate value theorem tells me there's got to be a place somewhere in between where it's actually equal to 0. Okay. So in this case, I'm familiar enough with about what root 2 is that I can sort of come up with an initial guess without necessarily having to rely on the intermediate value theorem. But you can always, if you've got a function that you're a little less familiar with, just play around with it. If you can find one place where it's positive and one place where it's negative, and if it's continuous, on the interval between, including and between those endpoints, then you know there's going to be a root in between. Okay. So for my initial guess, I'm just going to say 3 halves, halfway in between 1 and 2. Okay. I happen to be familiar enough with root 2 that I know it's closer to 1.4, but that's okay. I'm just going to guess 3 halves. Now, if I plug 3 halves into this function, if I look at f of 3 halves, that's going to be 9 fourths minus 2. I'm just going to write that 2 as 8 fourths. So that's 1 fourth. So I can see then that 3 halves was a little bit too big. Because if I look at the graph here, 3 halves gives me 1 fourth. That's got to be a point to the right because that's where I'm getting positive values for f. Okay. So I can see that I was wrong, but I think I'm probably reasonably close. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to improve upon this guess. So I'm going to let x2 be what I hope is a better guess. So I hope a better guess. 
essentially, when I guessed three halves, that put me here. Now, I can see what I'd like to do is just follow the graph until I get to this point right here, and that x value is going to be root 2. But I don't know exactly how to follow that graph. But if I were to take the tangent line at that point, I could easily come up with a formula for the line, and I could figure out where the line crosses the x-axis. And I could say, I bet the x-intercept of that line is going to be a better guess of where the x-intercept of this function is than my initial guess, which put me way up here at a height of 1 fourth. So x2 is going to be the x-intercept of the sorry, the x value of the x-intercept. The x-intercept is a point. This is the x-intercept. This is the x value of the x-intercept. So the x value of the x-intercept of the tangent line <laughs> at x1. So if I want to find that, what I'm going to need to do is come up with an equation for this line and then I can plug in 0 for y, because I know that's what y is at the x-intercept, and then I can solve for x. So let's try that. So anytime I want to find a tangent line, I need two things. I need a point, and I need the slope. Well, the point is what we have right here. That was our first guess, and then the y value we got when we plugged into that first guess. So that's 3 halves, 1 fourth. The slope is going to be f prime evaluated at 3 halves, because I want the tangent line at that point. Now remember, f of x was x squared minus 2. So f prime of x will just be 2x, f prime at 3 halves is 2 times 3 halves is going to be 3. So now I can get the equation of my tangent line. I'm just going to use the fact that rise is equal to slope times run. I'm going to calculate the rise and the run using this point and an arbitrary point x, y. So the rise would be y minus a fourth. The slope we've just said is 3, and the run is x minus 3 halves. Excellent. So that's my tangent line. That's an equation for this pink line right here. I want to know where that line crosses the x-axis, so I'm going to plug in 0 to find the x value of the x-intercept which is going to be what I'm calling here x2. My second guess, which I'm hoping is a better guess than the first guess that I made. So let me just clear a little bit of space here. If I plug in 0 for y, I get 0 minus 1 fourth is equal to 3 times, I'm going to go ahead and just call the x value now x2, because x2 is the x value that goes with a y value of 0, minus 3 halves. So negative 1 fourth is equal to 3x2 minus 9 halves. I'm going to add over the 9 halves. So let's see, 9 halves would be 18 fourths, so that's going to give me 18 fourths minus 1 fourth is 17 fourths is equal to 3x2. <laughs> Divide both sides by 3. That means I'm multiplying by 1 third. So I get 17 twelfths is equal to x2. <laughs> now I'm hoping that 17 twelfths is, as it appears to be, closer to root 2 than 3 halves was. And just from this tangent line, I can see that that's the case because that had me coming a little bit to the left. Because the graph was concave up, I know that the tangent line was below the graph, so 
so I know that I'm still a little bit to the right here. I could actually confirm that. If I plugged this into F, I'd see that I'm still going to be getting a positive value. Okay, so that we hope is a better estimate for the square root of 2. <laughs> Turns out it is a better estimate. Newton's method did work in this case. Now, is that good enough? I don't know, but what could I do if I wanted to improve upon it? Well, if I wanted to improve upon it, I could do this again. I could plug in 17 twelfths. That would give me, picture's going to get crowded here, but that would give me a point here. I could follow that tangent line and hope that that got me even closer to root 2. And then if I wanted to improve upon that, I could do it again. So I could keep doing this process again and again and again, and hopefully, if I were to write out my answer as a decimal, so if I were to do this division and write it as a decimal, I'd start to notice that the digits of the decimals, at least the first few digits, were starting to be the same, so that I was actually converging to the right answer. <laughs> now, does that always work? The answer is no. It works some of the time. It doesn't work every single time. So what I want to do is in the next video, we're going to talk about how can I just sort of find a generic formula to make this process a little bit faster, okay? And then we'll talk about when does this work and when does it not work and how do we know.